I've been using GoodNotes with my iPad and Apple Pencil for the past year at university and it's allowed me to go entirely paperless for the first time in my life. So I thought that I'd make a walkthrough both for people who are brand new to the app and people who've been using it for a while but want to make the most of it. Now I have divided the video into sections with timestamps in the description so you can skip to the parts of the video that most interest you but I'm going to go through most of the details so it might be worth watching the whole video. And before we get started I just wanted to mention that around 97% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed so I would really appreciate it if you would leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel so that YouTube recommends my content to more people. Now to start with I just wanted to mention a few reasons why I use GoodNotes. The first is if you have an iPad and an Apple Pencil then it's basically a no-brainer. In my opinion it's the best note-taking app on the market and it will allow you to make the most out of your iPad's features. It allows you to write notes, edit PDFs, and highlight documents with a lot more options than that default notes app that comes installed with every iPad and I don't know if it's the same for other note taking apps but GoodNotes is a one-time purchase no subscription and that's great in an age where it feels like every app and every service has moved to a subscription based model and in many ways it's actually a lot more convenient than normal paper because you can have all your notes an entire library's worth of books and an entire stationery store's worth of highlighters pens and pencils it's so convenient to have all of that all in one place now to start with, we're going to go through the first step of using GoodNotes, which is creating a notebook. Now the first thing to do is to go to settings, then notebook templates, and that will allow you to choose the template that you want for your notebooks going forward. So for me, that's usually just a ruled narrow paper and a simple default cover. But as I say, you can change this after the fact, so don't worry too much about which one you pick. Now to actually create the notebook, there are three main ways of doing this. The first is to simply double tap on the new icon and that will immediately open a new notebook and you can immediately start writing. Now this will open in the default template style that we just selected in the template settings. Now the other option is to push on the new icon and then of course choose notebook. Now this will give you the option to both create a title, so I'm just going to type in test and then also select the paper style that you want um, before you start writing as well as the cover style and as I said before you can easily change this after the fact so don't worry too much but one thing to look out for is the paper size and so if you think that you might want to print these out then you should obviously choose A4 so that it looks good on a normal A4 piece of paper when you print it out and doesn't look all squashed or weird and then when you're ready with your selections you can just click create and like before it will just open a new notebook and you can just start writing easily and then the last option is in this new option menu here, you can click import. And if you have a textbook, for example, or any other PDF document, you can just tap on that. So I'll just select bio law and that will open the PDF document and you can immediately start um, doing whatever you want. You can immediately start highlighting. You can immediately start writing. It's very easy to just start annotating a PDF that you already have in your files app. And so those were the main ways of creating a new notebook to start annotating on in GoodNotes. But for now, let's move on to actually annotating. And so we're going to continue now with the main purpose of GoodNotes, which is, of course, note taking. And so I'm going to show this by just opening my test document that I created earlier and this will open the main view of GoodNotes. So the first thing to look out for is the pen tool because this is of course probably the thing that you will be using the most. If you tap on the pen tool this will give you three options for pen style fountain, ball and brush and these all vary in thickness and how they react to the movement of the Apple Pencil, the angles and the pressure. Both fountain and brush pen change this and so depending on how hard you push on the Apple Pencil will create a different line. So that's quite light. This is a bit harder, so more pressure. You can see the difference in the thickness in the lines. And so making our way down, pressure sensitivity is not really relevant. You don't have to touch that. Draw and hold allows you to create shapes with your pen. And so if you wanted to create a circle, all you need to do is do a rough circle and then you hold it and it will create a perfect circle. Next is the erase tool. This of course allows you to erase what you've done. With the first option, you can just erase part of the shape but if you tap on it the first option is erase entire stroke and if you turn that on it will erase the entire line so it's your eraser the entire line is gone so i usually have this off then the option for erase highlighter option is if for example you've written a note and you've highlighted it but then if you wanted to erase the highlighter you would also erase the text but with this option it means they will only erase the highlights and leave the text beneath it and then the final option within the eraser setting is auto deselect and i always have this on what it means is if you are erasing something like this the second you let go it switches back to the original tool so i didn't tap on the pen tool which just switched back automatically and this is just a small time saver that i always have on i just find it very convenient 
Next is the highlighter tool. And as with the pencil, you can easily change the color of the highlight by just tapping the color on the side. This allows you to add in a hex code, which is that code at the bottom, or you can just use this wheel, or you can tap on this, which just brings up a more standard color selector. And this option allows you to add presets, which will appear in this option here. And then you can choose which ones you want to be in this top bar, which can only hold three different colors. Now, as far as settings for highlighters, the only real option is to draw in a straight line, which is very convenient as well. So when you're highlighting, often you'll be maybe a bit scraggly, but when you, once you let go, it becomes straight. Next is the shape tool. So this allows you to just quickly draw a shape, a bit like the circle that I drew earlier. So if I want to draw a triangle, then it just becomes a triangle. And then within here, you have a couple of options such as fill color. And now if I draw a shape, it will fill it with a transparent color. Next is the selector tool. This allows you to select a bunch of different things that you've done and then move them all at the same time. So if you wanted to move a paragraph or a sentence of text, then you can easily do that. Next is a new addition. It's the sticker tool. This allows you to just add a sticker really quickly and you can add your own ones for things like key information, like pages or dates that you can just add to documents really easily. The next option is the photo tool, which allows you to import images into your documents from your camera roll and so if you tap any of these photos in this bar at the top it will immediately put it into the document and you can easily resize it or remove it and if you tap the photo icon again it will bring up the photo picker and or you can click insert from and this will bring up the files app and you can choose it if you have the image within your files app next is the text tool which allows you to put in type text really simply and you can change these the font size and the font and the color of the text for example and then the final option in this little toolbar is the laser pointer and this allows you to have a digital laser pointer on your text and then the second you let go of the apple pencil it vanishes not really sure when you'd use this maybe if you were presenting over airplay to a display within the class and you were trying to show off what you were doing but realistically i don't really see what the point of this is. Now the final option that I actually haven't spoken about is the first option and this is basically a magnifier so it allows you to zoom into your document and so this blue rectangle is the view that you're seeing at the bottom and what this allows you to do is to write very neatly and so you can actually write in this magnified option at the bottom and I know a lot of people use that just to make their notes look a bit more neat. Oh and there's actually one more thing that I forgot to mention which is of course the size of the pen and this just allows you to choose the thickness of when you're writing so you can either have quite thick or middle or quite thin and you can change this size by just dragging this option here and so that's basically everything you need to know as far as annotating with good notes the next thing we'll talk about is organization both within a document and in the main menu so within a document in the top left you will see the four squares and this brings up a list of all the different pages that you have within your notebook and you can quickly add a page from within here and choose the template that you want. There's also a small icon at the top which allows you to favorite a page. And it makes it red and they will appear in this favorites section. And then there's also outlines which allows you to create an outline of different headings, let's say. But that's probably getting a bit in depth and you probably won't ever use that. I know I never did. And from this page, you can easily delete a number of pages or rotate them or export them as well. So this acts as sort of like a hub for all the different pages that you have within a notebook. And trust me, when you start getting, you know, 50, 100, 200 pages within a document, it becomes very important to easily be able to see all the pages in a list view like this. The next option allows you to search within the document. And this searches both your handwritten text and type notes. And if you have a PDF, it will also search through the text within the PDF. The next option is one that we've already mentioned. It's the favorite option. This will just favorite the page and it will appear both in this option and in the main menu, which we'll go through a bit later on. Next is the share option. This will allow you to share the document with someone else who has good notes and you can collaborate on a document. Then you can export this page, export the entire notebook, print it. And then the presentation mode area allows you to choose the different presentation settings if you were to use AirPlay in a classroom, let's say, and show your work to the class. And then as far as exporting options go, if you tap on export all, you can choose either PDF, image, a good notes file, or a link. You can choose the name. There are a bunch of different options here. And when you're ready, you can just tap export and it will export it to any place that you want. This button allows you to add a page really quickly and you can choose from these templates. The next option removes the editing choices. And so this is used if you just want to read the notes you've made. And now the next type of organization that we'll go through is on the main menu. So within here, you can obviously see the list of all of your documents and you can sort them by date, by name, by type. You can sort them by either their front cover like this or a list view and within here you can also favorite a document so if you like this document you can just push the star 
and that will add it to your favorite section, which you can see at the bottom, the last option is favorites. And within here, you will see both favorited pages and favorited documents. And you can choose the any option and that will choose documents, pages or folders. So it's very easy to choose between the different favorited document types. Like within a document, there is a search option, but this will actually search within your entire library. So every single PDF, every single notebook, it will search through all of them to find that word that you've typed in. And then the last option is sharing. And this allows you to share documents with other people. I don't use this because I don't have a need to share my documents, but if you do, then it's here. Now, the main form of organization within GoodNotes is folders. And unlike other note-taking apps like Notability, you can have an infinite number of folders within folders. And so to create one, all you have to do is tap new, then folder, and you can name the folder, tap in test, and that will just create a folder. And then you can easily drag and drop your notebooks into different folders. So I've just dragged it into test, and now it's within here. And if I wanted to, I could create a new folder within this folder. And so those are basically all of the organization features within GoodNotes. I guess it could become a bit chaotic if you have like 50 layers worth of folders within folders, but so long as you keep only two or three or four layers worth of folders, then you should be able to keep it pretty organized. And the last thing that I'll go through are the deep settings of GoodNotes, including the backup feature, which is absolutely critical for keeping your notes safe. And so in the top right, you will see, of course, the settings icon and then another settings. And so once you're within here, you will see all of the deep settings within GoodNotes. Now, the first one is handwriting recognition. This allows you to choose the main language that you want to write in and then also additional languages. But for most people, it's just going to be the language that you speak. And so there's no real reason to come into this option. Next is document editing. Now, these are loads of different options and you can go through this at your own pace. But some of the main ones to look out for are screen automatic lock. So this option, if you have it off, it won't allow the iPad to turn off its screen. Now, this is good if you're using it as a book. It's very annoying if your iPad just keeps turning off. Next, personally, I change screen scrolling direction to vertical rather than horizontal. I know it feels less like a book, but it's easier to pinch to zoom within a document. And I just think that it feels nicer on a digital device like this. But of course, it's up to you to choose the one that you want. There aren't really that many reasons to touch these other settings. So for example, iCloud, if you have it on, then it's good. But for me, the most important option is the automatic backup option. Now, this is super important because you don't want to be in the position where you accidentally break your iPad and not only have you lost hundreds of pounds on a device, but you've also lost all of your notes, which are priceless. But this option allows you to back up your notes as PDFs to OneDrive, Google Drive or Dropbox. And so you can access them on any of those accounts from any device, even if your iPad was to break. And so the first thing that I would do is to go into the settings and turn on this feature. Another option if you don't want to use cloud storage is to use the backup data option. Now, if you push this, it will export all of your items into a GoodNotes file type. If you were to break your iPad and you got a new one, you could just simply import it again into GoodNotes. But I still think that the best option is to use the automatic backup feature because it does it automatically in the background every time you open GoodNotes and just puts it in one of these cloud storage options and you can access it from any device, not just an iPad with GoodNotes installed. And so that's it. That was my walkthrough of GoodNotes for the iPad Pro. I hope that you found it useful if maybe you're going to university and you just recently got an iPad or if you're considering an iPad or if you've had an iPad for a while and you weren't quite sure if you wanted to spend the money on GoodNotes. Now you know all the features that it has. And I would definitely recommend spending the seven or eight pounds that it costs to get the app. So thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, then please do leave a like below and subscribe to my channel so you see my future content and YouTube recommends my content to more people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.